Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap, I've got quite a lot going on. I do some more work on the little vertical steam engine. I get the crankshaft assembled into there and the big end put together for real. I do a welding job uh, for one of my cousins. It's actually an aluminium sump of an Audi. Uh, a five minute welding job that basically took all Saturday morning. Anyway, I show quite a lot of that, uh, the preparation in some of the welding. I do a job on the lathe for the Brunel law I make a small steel bush, a nice simple turning job. But I managed to get some nice close up shots of some uh, decent heavy cuts. Anyway, I hope you find it interesting. Last Monday, I had a day away with Richard. We went to Old Wall Farm again uh, to have a look at that super central steam wagon. We spent quite a lot of time setting valve clearances open, adjusting tappets, grinding valves in. We got the engine into steam and we're going a good run on the road. Um, I got some good shots of it being driven. Richard was driving it, Alex was firing it. Uh, a fantastic day it was. It was raining and snowing, but it was still a very, very pleasant experience. Uh, I had another look around Alex's workshop and I got a little bit more video of some of the fantastic machinery and some of the fantastic engines that are down there. Anyway, I hope you find it interesting. Once again, I'm home alone. Debs at work. Uh, Emmy was supposed to be coming up this weekend, but she's had a fall at work and just managed to break her wrist. Just taking it off to me, I suppose. Anyway, Emmy, I know you're watching this. I hope it gets well soon. Right, so it took me to do the draw for the little Mercer DTI gauge. The buckets with all the names in here, so we'll fish about. Right, and there's a the one. Right, what I've got is Robert Eakins. It looks like Robert Eakins. Bring it up so you can have a, a look. Right, Robert, all you've got to do is send me an email with your address on and I'll post that off to you completely free anywhere in the world. But with a name like that, it sounds like the UK. I'm going to do one of that draw this week. It's going to be for exactly the same DTI gauge because I have got two of them. I I was going to keep on, but honestly, I've got a small start one the same size, so I'm going to give both of these away. As usual, if you want a chance to win that, all you have to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there. All you need to contain your email is your name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's pulled out, I'll post it off anywhere in the world. Completely free of charge. As I've always said, it's just a little way of me saying thanks for all the help and support I've had with this YouTube channel. I've got sure people now sending us in items specifically for the giveaway. These were actually sent in to be given away. Right, definitely worth a go. Get your name in, you never know, you might win. I've got an aluminium sump here. I think it's off a six cylinder Audi. It's got a crack in it, it's got a crack down there. See it's cracked all the way through and into that stud hole. People think you can just slab on a bit of weld down there, it doesn't work like that. You've actually got to cut the crack out to keep metal, so it's cracked down there. It's also cracked there. It's got a crack in it there. I don't normally, and I wouldn't normally take this sort of thing on, um, it belongs to my cousin. So I said I would give a go for them. So the first thing to do is drill out the crack, clean it. It's got to be clean, really clean. Any trace of oil in there at all, and it just erupts in the, into the weld. The oil actually seems to soak into the pores of the metal. So you've got to do some damage with a, a drill and a die grinder. Cut this all the way back to really clean metal, and then we'll try welding it for them. Chain drill the crack all the way down. You can see the swarf is coming out of that hole, but it's black dirty with oil. And that's not very thin. Not very thin, is it not? Belly end. That's not very thick. So you look if that's a mil and a half, two mil there. Anyway, we'll give it a try. Okay. 
So if you just want to do some damage, you're too good pitching about with it, you've got to cut out all the contaminated metal, or you'll have no chance to add all the welding it. Clamp to keep it straight. One good thing you can do with aluminium is you can put a little steel dowel there, it's the same size as the drill hole, and you can build the weld up around the dowel and then knock the dowel out. The weld obviously wouldn't stick to the dowel because it melts in a much lower temperature. You can also use copper. I'll probably put a copper backing piece in there just to try and save it all from falling through. I think the first thing to do is try and get a tack on this and see what a see if it's going to weld. Will here be Material that can weld or it'll be total shite. Hopefully it'll weld. I've got a piece of copper here. I'm going to clamp it in behind there just to give the weld something to build up on now. Until we're going to tack it together. That's quite a lot of preparation work before you weld it. Uh, and people wonder why you want a, a little bit of money to weld these and think it's just something to slam in some weld on a, a dirty crack. It's not. It does get quite involved. I'm going to weld this obviously on ESC and I'm going to use a silicon based filler rod. You normally find a silicon based filler rod works well on aluminium castings. You use a magnesium based, or it's a 5% magnesium based rod on extrusions. Anyway, we'll let you want it and see what happens. I've got some good penetration all the way through. I've just done the torch across that and blend it all in. It's, um, it's really not too bad actually. It's certainly not the prettiest well I've ever done, but uh, it has welded up all the way through. We'll give it a little test, a brake cleaner, because if it's got a, a crack, brake cleaner will 
Ripley I will find it without a doubt. Dry. So a little bit of work with a fire and a drill on there and that should be good to go. It's looking pretty good now. That's it done. So the next time you ask somebody if there's only a five minute welding job on an aluminium sump, you know the reason why they just laugh at you. The last time I looked at this, I'd blanked the holes off in the crankshaft for the oil wheel. I just want to make sure I have still got an oil passed still to the big end. And when the oil goes into that main bearing there, in through that hole, and then you can see it's coming out out of the big end hole, so a clear passage in there, down through the crank pin, into there. Quite a few people have commented on how if that would be enough oil to lubricate the big end. Quite often these big ends were lubricated by grease, just a little grease point on them. It isn't actually going to do a massive high RPM and the big end is very wide. It's high quality bronze and that crank pin there is ENH steel so it will be very very tough. Right, so next thing is to put the crankshaft into the engine for real. All these bearing caps and all these bearings are numbered so they only go one way. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put two O-rings on the crankshaft. They go on there and they'll stop a lot of the oil running down through the bearings. I know they didn't use the rings on the in the day, but if they had them, I'm sure they would have used them. Right, so that's going to lie into there. This is just ordinary 2050 grade engine oil, nothing special. Right, so that turns in there nice and free. Plenty of lubrication on it. There's a little letter here there, and a little letter here there. That one drops in. Same with the rear one. Except the rear one, it's got a letter B on it. And the oil pots as well. That's a, the bearing keeps. That's a letter here there. And a letter B on that one.
one of the first jobs I did on this engine after I made the crank was laying raw I ream those in position so the bearings were nice and true that end float there will be taken up there will be a washer goes on there and a washer goes on there between the eccentric very pleased with that indeed Once again, I'm home alone, so I'm going to do the draw myself for the little Starrett DTI gauge. It wasn't a Starrett on your bell end, it was a Mercer 